uh, I heard that you were guys were talking about Section Eight. So let me tell you something right off the bat that is um, uh, I consider to be fairly good. Good, maybe good. Maybe I shouldn't say good. Interesting news. Um, have any of you heard of EHOC, the Equal Housing and Opportunity Commission, sometimes also referred to as MEHOC? Um, the attorney who, who uh, the main attorney there is an attorney who I have never gotten along with. And um, so I wasn't necessarily sad to see this, to hear this news. Um, we had heard rumors about this and then it was in the paper, for those of you who saw the paper, maybe a couple of weeks ago. Apparently there's been some financial irregularities in EHOC and they have run out of money and uh, people have been laid off and the last couple of attorneys there are trying to get rid of all their cases and get the the tenants to get new people and that kind of thing. And um, so that's very interesting. It Apparently it's a federal investigation of how funds were used. And what EHOC did was two things. They had attorneys who would represent tenants in some situations, and they also were testers. I think most of you probably know what testers are. They um, would send out like two couples of different races to apply for the same apartment and see if they were treated differently um, or people with children versus people without children. You know, they um, were kind of trying to set up people to get accused of discrimination. And we've represented a few people over the years who got quote unquote caught by the testers. Um, and for the most part, it was people who were trying to do the right thing. They were just inadvertently violating discrimination laws, like not putting children in a unit that had a balcony that was made out of wrought iron. And the poor landlords, this nice young couple just felt they, they had children of their own and they just felt that some kid was gonna get their heads stuck in the wrought iron. And, you know, it wasn't going to be a good thing. Um, but anyway, so that's what they have been doing. And they have received a lot of HUD money, um, a, su a substantial part of their budget, for doing this testing. Now, I'm not going to tell you that nobody else is going to come out and test you right now, because HUD itself still has the ability to do that. And the city of St. Louis has a civil rights enforcement agency that can do it. And um, the state of Missouri has an agency that can do it. So it's not like you're quote unquote, safe from doing that. Um, but it's interesting to know that they seem to be um, fading away. And I personally did not get along with one of the main attorneys there. I beat her in court over and over again, and she um, was not nice to me. Um, sore loser kind of thing. <laughs> and um, we, I tried a case with her where she asked for a jury there was no jury waiver in my client's lease. So we had to try this to this poor jury and it was a support animal case. And um, the alleged support animal, um, my client had cameras in the foyer and it wasn't just one support animal. There were like four dogs that were living there. They had video that um, they weren't picking up the dog poop in the yard. So they were driving everybody else in the building crazy and we got on video that the young teenage child who was huge, this girl was like a big girl, like easily could play for the Chiefs or the Blues. I mean, she was a large girl and um, she was breaking into the mailboxes in the foyer of the building. And when I played that video for the jury, <laughs> Um, we, let's just say we knew that that was a win right there. Um, and, uh, this attorney was mad that I played this video for the jury, but she didn't do any discovery or ask me for anything. So it was a perfect setup for me to give them a, a little TV surprise, um, in any event. So they're gone. So that sort of leads me into the whole section eight thing, because, um, well, first, let me ask you, what jurisdiction were you referring to? Was it the city of St. Louis? Um, whoever was talking about yeah, Section 8 uh, was the city. I, I, believe, I believe it was the city of St. Louis, yes. Okay. They probably passed an ordinance that says you can't discriminate on the base of source of income, which is um, what that means. So I would say, first of all, don't put no Section 8 in your advertising. 
that being said, you have the right to pre-qualify your tenants based on your criteria. And that includes income and affordability and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I know clients who have done well with Section 8 and don't object to having it. I sympathize with the bird, the additional burdens of um, more inspections and more paperwork and that kind of thing and special provisions in the lease and harder to evict them and, and what have you. So I think you should, you've heard me say this before, you should be screening vigorously, especially in these times. And I think you will find a legal reason to turn people down who are applying based on getting assistance and that kind of thing. Um, and this is a chance for me to remind you too, that for those of you who look at CaseNet, that's great. You should definitely look at CaseNet when you're um, taking applications, but they can get CaseNet sealed now. Um, it kind of varies depending on which county it is and which judge and you know that kind of thing, whether they're gonna be successful doing it, but just assume that they can hide that from you. Um, and that you should do other screening in addition to just looking at CaseNet. But looking at CaseNet is a good first start. I'm always a little surprised when I'm looking up one of my cases on CaseNet and I find out the person's been sued 10 other times. And I'm thinking, why didn't my nice client know this? It's not even, these cases aren't even sealed. Um, and we have people that we, like they remember us, you know, they come to court and they go, oh, I had you on my last eviction. Oh, well, good. <laughs> You know, I would want to make friends in a different way, but okay. <laughs> um, so I would just be careful about Section 8. I wouldn't be surprised if that whole thing gets litigated sooner or later. Um, I don't think anybody can make you take any tenant. But there's other things that the city is doing that we consider potentially more crazy than that. Um, and it's interesting because... Um, some of the board of aldermen are backing down on some of the crazy things they were talking about doing. And my alderman where I live in the city is Michael Browning. And he kind of started out as a progressive, but he's a bright young man. And I see him from time to time. I have a commercial th thing and going on in the ward where we've been dealing with him and he's been good. And um, I asked him if he would like to come to eviction court with me. And to my surprise, he agreed. And he came to eviction court with me and he sat and listened to me talk to some tenants. Um, sadly, that was in the city. And that on that day, those mediators and CRC and everything were not there. I don't know why, but I showed them their table and how they're usually there. And I explained to him, you know, it's fine. You can give $5 million for tenants to have attorneys. But if you haven't paid your rent, you're going to get evicted. I don't care how many attorneys you have. If you do something that, causes the landlord to terminate your tenancy if you do a material breach of the lease if you're dealing drugs or shooting guns or you know that kind of thing we're going to be able to evict you i mean we know how to do this i don't care how many attorneys you have the tenant has the tenant might buy an extra week or two but they're not going to get much longer than that of course you know i'm going to get on that horse again about make sure you have a jury trial waiver in your lease and um make sure your lease has been vetted by one of us or, or a lawyer that you know to make sure it's a good collectible lease and doesn't have anything um, that would bite you in the butt. I'm coming up with a couple of new clauses based on some things I think that were out there that I'll be ready to ship over to John after the first of the year, I think. But um, you want to make sure that your lease is solid. And when they get these this, this $5 million for the attorneys, it's going to start next year. And here's what we think is going to happen. We think legal services is going to be running it. And um, we, we're friends with some of the lawyers there, and they've told us basically $5 million does not buy a lot of attorneys, a lot of attorney time. And there are a lot of evictions. So information will be sent to the tenants. They'll open the phones on Monday morning, and like the first 12 who call will get a lawyer, and the rest of them will be told, sorry, we're out of lawyers for this week. You'll have to try back next week. So it's not everybody that's going to have a lawyer. If it was, they'd spend $5 million in one month, and they'd be done. But um, sometimes it's, we welcome when they have a lawyer because then we don't have to deal with the crazy person and the lawyers at legal services and who are used to doing this kind of work understand 
exactly what can and can't happen, and we'll make a deal with them. Like I said, this might buy people an extra week or two, or we might put together a payment plan that we wouldn't have done if they weren't represented, or we might waive late fees because in Missouri, late fees are discretionary to the judge. Thanks. And, um, it, you know, that the legal services lawyer will know and we will know that we won't get the late fees if we go to trial. So we might say to you, let's kick the late fees and settle on the rest of it. Um, so uh, it's not going to really help them that much. So then they were going on, they wanted to do a bill that would say you could only evict someone for good cause. And I told Alderman Browning, I said, my people don't evict someone unless they have a cause. And, you know, first of all, 90% or more of the evictions are for non-payment, and that's a good cause. We're allowed to do that. <laughs> you know, they're not paying. We're allowed to get them out. And most of the rest of them are some material breach of the lease, and we are careful, and we screen those, and we talk to the landlord and make sure that it's a sufficiently material, important thing that we can um, terminate the lease early and do unlawful detainer against them. And then there's the ones that are after a foreclosure or after the end of the lease and they won't get out, that's good cause too. Landlords don't take their good tenants to court to evict them. <laughs> they're happy to have a good tenant that pays and they're not going to put them out. In addition, there's this little thing about state law preemption. Um, they can't pass anything in the city that would go against state law and that would go against state law. So um, some of you may be familiar with this St. Louis Housing Providers Coalition that was put together by Charlie Hinderleiter and folks at, at the Association of Realtors. And I think we, that you guys have some representation in that group and what have you. Well, we had a woman um, who works for Megan Green, um, a woman named Christina Garmandiera come to one of our meetings. Um, and it was clear that um, she believes that she knows everything and nobody else knows anything. and. I invited her after the meeting to come to court with me. And she goes, well, I've been to court before. Okay, so you know everything. Good for you. Um, we're having another meeting of that group on the 11th. And Alicia Saunier is coming. And she's an alderman who is putting forth a lot of these propositions that sound a little far out. I think she's really behind the let the homeless poop in your yard proposed ordinance, which supposedly has been withdrawn, but we'll see what she has to say. So when we, when I see you again next year, I might have more information about what the city is going to do, but it looks like the, all their crazy ideas that they were publicizing are all getting slow walked now as the city councilor's office tells them you can't do stuff that's in violation of state law. And the community says, no, we don't want that. And, you know, that kind of thing. So Hopefully that will um, get dialed back a little bit from the craziness of last summer. So that's all the new, new stuff I have. We're at that point in the year where if you haven't filed your eviction by now, you're probably getting a court date next year. Um, the county and the city will both, um, the sheriffs will stop doing evictions for some period of time around the holidays. Um, I think that while I'm not necessarily sure I totally agree with that. I understand why it's bad optics <laughs> to be putting people out and letting them look at their Christmas tree from the sidewalk. But um, yeah, so if you have already a judgment, you might want to make sure your execution gets on file really quickly. And if you are filing a new lawsuit, be prepared for the idea that you might be getting court dates the first or second week of January. We're going to be changing judges in the city and the county. In the city, we're getting Judge Woody asked, and we like her just fine. So we're sorry to see Judge Roy go, but we think we'll have a good year with Judge Woody asked. And in the county, we're getting, I think, the new judge that will be appointed today by the governor. So I'll know more when I find out which pick that is. And if it's a pick that I don't like, I can tell you I'll be getting it. I'll be changing divisions. We'll work it out somehow. Um, the other counties surrounding counties are all pretty much stable as far as changing judges this year goes. So does anyone have any questions for me? I got a question. Um, you mentioned sending us your, sending you or your office our leases. I actually do have a tenant who's moving in January. Um, 
how would that work? Just email it to you, or if you have some clauses, I don't know if John has it already, that you have recommended, I can add them to my lease. Um, what do you recommend that way? Yeah, here's what you want to do. You want to get with Chris Bosler of my office, and he is in court in St. Charles this morning, and then he's going to be out of the office the rest of the day. Um, so call Chris Bosler next week. Our office number is 314-962-1115. He has the lease on his computer and he can send it to you um, or you can send him your lease and he can review it and decide if you should just adopt a whole new lease or if he should just make some changes and that kind of thing. And if you have okay. special circumstances, you know, he can go over that with you too and see if you need any special clauses. Thank you. Okay. Hey, Kathy, this is this is Jim Heiser. Uh, Hi. Getting back, how are you uh, on the you. Section Eight thing? Yeah. Uh, so when somebody calls up and says, "I'd like to rent your unit," and do you take Section Eight? Do you just say, "Yes, we do. Uh, we have a uh, third party, you know, uh, review service that we hire," and yeah. take their money, even knowing that. Most likely, a lot of them will not be able to qualify due to income, or do, should you say anything more than that? Well, I would I would take their application and put it through the same process you put everybody else through. Okay. And just leave it at that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. And, you know, you know the downsides of Section 8. During the pandemic, a lot of the landlords that had Section 8 portfolios were still getting paid, you know, during that period of time when um, there was, you know, the government assistance was promised, but it hadn't quite worked its way through to us yet. Well, you know, if if, if they would qualify and you haven't done any initial paperwork, what, what happens then? What's the process after that for them moving in. I mean, you still got to get inspected by Section 8. I mean, we don't do it. So that's why I'm asking the question. Yeah. Um, I think that Section 8 has to has to inspect it and you have to sign a Section 8 lease. Okay. Anybody else got anything? Well, I oh. hope you all have a fabulous holiday. I will be um, in the Caribbean on the first Friday after New Year's. I'll be getting back that weekend. So maybe I'll I'll hop back on on the second Friday of January. How big is your suitcase? Um, <laughs> <I know>. we <laughs> Can actually, we come with you? <laughs> yeah, really. Well, we're sailing on the Holland America New Stottendam. And we, we leave Fort Lauderdale on December 27th. So anybody who wants to come aboard, come aboard. Um, and we're trying to do, we just bought new luggage and we're trying to just do carry on this time. So we'll see. <laughs> mm, nice. My husband is skeptical, skeptical, skeptical about how much shopping I'll do because he's traveled with me before. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll check a bag on the way home is what you're telling us. We might Kevin. have to do that. <laughs> we might be shopping for another bag. So we'll see. Okay, Merry guys. Christmas. Thank you. Same to you. Thank you so much, Talk Kathy. Yeah, we'll look look forward to talking to you after the new year. So you have a great okay. and uh, we'll see you soon.